Welcome to CC Writes. My name is CC Lepke, and today I am going to MacGyver a story. Now, if you don't already know, MacGyver is a character that was originally played by Richard Dean Anderson in a TV series about a man who could take basically any object that he found and he could turn it into something that would be useful to him to help him get through whatever difficult situation he found himself in. It was a really fun story and the the joke about the series is that MacGyver could basically take shoestring and bubble gum and turn it into a bomb. So today what I am doing is I'm going to find several items uh, randomly around my house and I'm going to use that to create a story. The rules that I'm using for this particular project is that uh, the the objects don't have to be the subject of the story but they do have to play an important role in the story and I have to use all of the objects that I find. I'm going to use four objects and uh, see what I can come up with. I'm pretty excited about this. I've done something similar in the past uh, where I've challenged my, uh, my YouTube followers and my friends to give me little pieces of uh, words or an interesting idea that I have to fit into the stories that I'm writing. And actually several of my stories uh, that I've done in the past actually have inclusions of those challenges that people gave me. Uh, this is something a little bit different because those I was, because those words I was sneaking in, whereas this one, the main point of everything or what sets the scene for everything has to be based on those objects that I choose. So with that in mind, let's get started. So I went through my house and I picked out four objects that I thought were suitably interesting for a story. I've got these playing cards. Um, I use playing cards a lot. I have like 60 packs of them. I just really enjoy playing different kinds of card games. I've got this Viking helmet, which actually belongs to my husband and I thought would be a fun little thing to add into a story. I've got this octopus statue, which is a bookend that my best friend got me as a present and that I love quite a lot because it's just so unique. Finally, I have this penguin statue, which we just kind of have in our house because we think it's cute. <laughs> So with all of my objects picked, it is now time to get started on my story.
I ended up having a lot of fun coming up with the story for this challenge. Um, I came up with something that's about Vikings and sort of explores the, the intricacies of hyper-masculinity in a testosterone-heavy environment. I was pretty excited about the subject matter, and the ending in particular was what I based the entire story around because it just kind of made me laugh to think about what ends up happening. So I'm really happy with how everything turned out, and I present to you my finished story. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button so you'll know when the next video comes out. Enjoy! The bite of arctic air clung to Finn's shoulders as he pulled his warm furs tight around his body. Across the table, Jürgen sneered. Gold coins glittered next to Jürgen's clubbed fingers, which tapped the rough-hewn flotsam the men had turned into a makeshift table. His eyes danced greedily as he waited for Finn to cast the dice again. Even as the dice left the cup, Finn knew that the tilt of the throw was all wrong. The knobby, yellowed bone dice scattered about as the ship tilted and swayed, weaving through fields of ice. Last of your coin there, Finn? Jürgen's voice was pleasant enough, but his grimy face split into a smug grin. Aye, Finn sighed. Spend it well, Jürgen. I'm done. You've cleaned me out. Jürgen laughed. Not a single treasure left to bet? Come now. What about that bonny Spangenhelm of yours? That pretty would look lovely on my dome, don't you think? Finn screwed up his face in distaste, but was saved from having to respond when a splash of water rocked the longship, soaking several of the men as they tried to sleep. The roar of surprised anger was cut short by laughter, as the honking chirp of a panicked penguin cut through the cold night air. Finn peeked outside the rough tent he and Jürgen had erected to play their game in peace. The handsome bird dodged the crew and swatted away hands that attempted to grapple the little blighter and throw it back out to sea. Mumbled groans floated through the night, as tired Vikings were nagged awake by the rampaging ice pigeon. Kill the damned thing and be done with it! Jürgen's voice was a baritone roar that cut through the din with precision. How did the blasted beastie get aboard anyway? Finn jumped up and raced to intercept the men, placing himself between his fellow Vikings and the pretty penguin. Come now, it's just a wee bird. He crouched low, speaking quietly to the penguin. And you're a beauty if I ever saw one. Such a fine creature. He reached out one hand gently, very slow. The penguin let him pet its head. It's not doing us any harm. Just let it be, and once it calms down, we can set it down on land. Always a softy you are, Finn. Though I suppose if we keep it aboard, it'll make finding breakfast a lot easier. Right, lads? Jürgen let out a mighty laugh, and the rest of the crew joined in. Finn sighed and gave the pink one one last pat on the head. You're safe, little one. He glanced back at Jürgen and added, For now. With a sigh and a stretch, Finn returned to his and Jürgen's tent to collect what remained of his belongings. I'm done for the day, I'm afraid. Best to save my pride whilst I still have some left. You can't be done, Finn. What about the helm? You've not got a single thing that's worth more to me than my spanking helm, and you know it well. This was passed down by your father's father's father. I, you've mentioned it once or twice. Jürgen smiled and reached into his small rucksack. But you haven't seen this little pretty that I picked up at the last village we hit. Jürgen placed a fine silver statue on the table. Many legs twisted around a large lump of a body with small, beady eyes. Gold suckers lined the bottom side of each leg, curled wildly about itself in eerie attention to detail. It was an octopus, 
and the beauty of the craftsmanship made the statue seem alive. The striking sea creature looked valuable enough to feed his family for years. Temptation made Finn hesitate, but only for a moment. Even so, Jurgen, my helm holds the history and honor of my family. I would be a fool to give that up. A fool, maybe, but at least you wouldn't be a coward. Finn glared at Jurgen, but the man smiled pleasantly back as if his words were reasonable. I thought only men were allowed aboard, but apparently I was wrong. I'm as much man as any here, Jurgen, and you well know it. I, because all the other men here were of a mind to coddle the pretty penguin, Jurgen raised his eyebrows suggestively. You seem to be attracted to all the pretty things. Finn slammed his fist down, sending a crack through the thick, flotsam table. That's enough. Jurgen grinned, knowing he'd won already. Just one more game, lad. Something new since you've all but mangled our dicing table. I picked up another trinket longer journey I've been meaning to try out. He pulled a small stack of cards from his belt purse and waved them gently in Finn's face. A traveling merchant taught me a game with these. You want me to bet on a game I've never played before? Keep your loincloth on. We'll play a couple of rounds so you get the hang of it. He shuffled the cards lazily and passed a few between them, showing Finn how to hold them and explaining the rules. It's called the Leaf Game, Jurgen explained as they laid out cards on their laps. The merchant said he had to change it up a bit. Got the game from some barbarians in the east, I guess. But it's close enough to dice that you should pick it up pretty quick. Jurgen wasn't wrong. By their third playthrough, Finn had the hang of it. He was able to remember what most of the cards meant, even with all their funny little symbols. This seems better than dice, actually, Finn admitted. I don't have to worry about the way the boat rocks as we play it. So then, you ready to play for real? Finn nodded, teeth clenched tight. Jurgen's hands were a blur as he laid out the cards in a complex configuration before delving out the share that went into his and Finn's hands. Finn balked when he saw his hand. Mostly coin cards or string of coin cards. The distaste showed on his face because Jurgen grinned smugly. Oh? Hand not to your liking? It's fine. Finn laid down his first card and picked up three from the table. Jurgen laid down his first card and picked up five in turn. Sweat beaded against Finn's brow as time after time he was only able to pick up two or three cards while Jurgen swept the board. It was soon clear that Finn would lose his Spangenhelm and his family would go home with nothing. Jurgen was pleased with himself. Not ready to quit yet, Finn? I have to try. Fishers ran through the board, separating any decent streaks he could get to salvage the game. The way things were going, Jurgen only needed a couple of good plays to take the pot. Finn couldn't let that happen. He couldn't lose the only treasure he had left. It was a mistake to let Jurgen goad him into playing this game. Tell you what, why don't we make a deal then? We can stop the game right here. I'll get the Spangen Helm, and you can have the pretty little statue. That statue is worth more than my helm. Why would you do that? Finn was learning something important about Jurgen. The man was a sneaky bastard. He wouldn't do anything kind for the sake of it. Jurgen's return smile was so wide that Finn could smell the man's acrid breath. Oh, you'll pay for the statue, of course. Just stop playing now and admit to the rest of the crew that you're not a man. He chuckled to himself. Well worth the loss of a pretty trinket for me, I'd say. There are few enough merchants that would give a Viking a fair price on stolen goods, anyway. Finn boiled under his furs. Merchants wouldn't pay a good price for the statue? The game was rigged from the beginning. 
he would lose his family's heirloom and his honor as a man all at once. Despair fought to drag him under as the boat rocked hard in the choppy waters. Finn hung his head. If he gave in to Jurgen's demand, admitted to the crew that he wasn't a man, he could at least earn the statue and try to find a way to sell it for what it was worth. But he would also lose the respect of the crew. He might not even be allowed to come on an expedition again. How would he feed his family after the money from the statue was spent? The boat rocked hard again, spilling some of the cards from the table. Jürgen leapt to grab at them and missed. With his arm outstretched, the bare skin of his wrist showed under his sleeve. Finn spied a stack of cards lashed to the man's wrist with a thin cord. Jürgen. Righteous fury seethed under Finn's skin, ready to lash out violently. Ready to accept my offer, then? Finn reached forward and caught Jürgen's wrist in a crushing grip. The man scrabbled at the hand that held him tight, trying to wrench himself free. Finn swatted Jürgen's hand away and released the cord that tied the cards to his opponent's wrist. You are cheating! Moldy teeth flashed in a sly grin. Well, I... The boat rocked again, sending Finn and Jürgen toffling to the bottom of the deck. Wood creaked, and the whole boat shifted violently sideways in an unnatural path against the water. It's a killer whale! A man, part of the way down the boat, pointed down into the water. It's attacking the ship! Finn begrudgingly let go of Jürgen and rushed to the side of the boat where the large whale tried to rip a hole in their vessel. They don't usually attack boats, he told the man. What's wrong with it? Must be starving. Jürgen peered over the hole next to Finn, staring down at the gnashing teeth and writhing body of the whale. The entire ship went quiet all at once. All eyes turned to the penguin nestled comfortably on the bottom deck. It blinked up at them with shining black eyes. Finn's stomach sank. Get the blasted penguin off the ship, Jürgen roared. Several men rushed forward at once, snatching at the penguin. The bird dropped down to dodge the men, then pushed itself forward on its belly until it could stand upright again. Someone tried to smack it with an oar handle, but the bird rolled away. As the men closed in, Finn pushed himself through the crowd, bracing for every time the whale laid out another strike against the boat. He jumped in front of the penguin and covered it with his own body. We're not throwing it back to the whale. There has to be another way. It's just a dumb bird. Jürgen picked his way to the front of the crowd and loomed over Finn and his precious penguin. That whale will sink our ship, you moron. Either the penguin dies or we all die. We could just get to the oars and row away until the whale leaves us be. Are you really such a woman that you care that much about a stupid penguin? The rest of the crew murmured their assent. Jürgen placed his hand on his hips and leaned in. You're a coward, Finn. You don't deserve to be here. I should go ahead and give you the pretty octopus statue. You've as much as admitted to the crew here and now that you're not a real man. Finn looked down at the penguin that huddled against his legs. The ship crashed and rocked as the killer whale landed blow after blow. Already, there was a fine layer of water in the bottom of the longboat. If this kept up, they would all die. Was he really not a man? Was it not okay to care for a lovely creature like the handsome penguin that shivered at his side? Finn wasn't sure what it meant to be a man but he was absolutely sure that he didn't want to be a man like Jürgen. The whale was starving. It wouldn't stop attacking the ship. Likely, it had been hunting the penguin all along. That was why the penguin tried to escape into the boat in the first place. There was really only one choice if he wanted to save the crew. 
With a mighty yell, Finn rushed forward and barreled into Jurgen, grasping the man around his midsection and hefting him onto his shoulders. He squatted low, then lifted with a powerful shout, tossing Jurgen over the side of the ship. The crew was silent, listening to Jurgen's screams. The boat stopped rocking. Suddenly, the night was perfectly silent. If I am to be a woman to you, then I may as well act like one. Finn wiped the sweat off his brow. All the women I know are ruthless. Thank you.